as he saw him. So when I started studying for the lesson, that's what God impressed upon my heart. So many times we're taken away with how we feel or our circumstances. We give in to it. There's two different systems. There's your system and there's God's system. We blame a lot on the devil and the devil has nothing to do with it because God is sovereign. God is in control. And the revelation of it all when you see it from God's perspective, you have nothing to worry about. Because guess what? You know that God has allowed this to come upon you. So why fret? Why stress out? It's only a test. This morning lesson, to live is Christ. And that's what I just said. To live is Christ. It, it, it's not that you live, it's that Christ lived through you. In every circumstance of your life. Let's look at our lesson this morning. I hope you came prayed up. Because guess what? The race is already started. This morning lesson will come from Philippians chapter 1, verses 12 through 26. Let us read. And this is the Apostle Paul servant of God but I would but I but I would ye should understand brethren that the things which happen unto me have fallen unto the furtherance unto the furtherance of the gospel hmm. and many of the brothers in the Lord waxing confidence by, bond, by my bonds, are much more bolder to speak the word without fear. One preach Christ of contentions, not sincerity, supposing to add affliction to my bonds. What then, notwithstanding every way, whether in praise, uh, pre, pre, pretense, or in truth, Christ is preached, and I therein do rejoice, yea, I will rejoice. According to my honest expectations and my hope that in nothing shall I be ashamed, but with that all bonds as always, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my bonds, in my body, whether it be in life or by death. But if I live in the flesh, this is, fruit, uh, this is the fruit of my labor. Yet, what shall I, what shall I choose? I won't not. Nevertheless, to abide in the flesh is more needful for you. Twenty six altogether. That you rejoice with me because of the abundance of Jesus Christ. 
That's a lot. That is a lot. That's a lot going on in those scriptures. <clears throat> Today's aim to demonstrate positive attitude as Paul lived to please Christ. <clears throat> That's the answer to the question today. Are you living to please Christ? The principle to teach that there is joy in living in the abundant life in Christ, mm, no matter what you're going through. The application, to encourage the students to, admit, to, 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 emulate, to emulate Paul's outlook and way of life through the power of Christ. Mm. To emulate, to become Christ-like. Hmm. The introduction of the, le uh, of the lesson, it opens talking about a man that was maybe born from birth, crippled, uh, deformed, had many disabilities. His name was Dr. Gates. He was a professor at a Bible college and he did not let his circumstance define him or who he was. He wrote two books and during his time at college or at his studies, the writer says that he was an understudy of him and he had a chance to get to know Doc. He wrote two books, even when he was a, somewhat of a paraplegic, not being able to use his hands and he would take a pencil and put it in his mouth and he would strike his typewriter one letter at a time but he wrote two books and God used this man in a mighty way because guess what he did not let his circumstance or his life define who he was because he knew who created him and that's why I opened the lesson this morning by saying, you can live your life totally unaware that you have been looking at a situation through the wrong lenses. Mm -hmm. We are a people that are defined most of the times in our lives by how we feel. Mm -hmm. That stops the agenda of Christ. Mm -hmm. Paul could have easily gave up. I want you to understand by looking at verse 12. But I would, that you would understand, brethren, that the things which happen unto me have fallen to furtherance the gospel. Paul traveling in Jerusalem, and all of a sudden he get arrested. Most people would think that, guess what? If something happened to the head, the body dies. But not in this case. Because you gotta understand that, guess what? God is the one who is orchestrating everything. God is the one that's orchestrating this right here. God has a system that is set up where, guess what? If you get off the scene, he'll replace you with someone else. And even after Paul was in prison, in the next passage, it says that more brothers became more boldly to speak about Christ. So it wasn't about Paul. Paul understood that, guess what? It was something greater behind him 
that was orchestrating this right here. So that my bonds in Christ may be manifested in all palaces. You know, they got a saying saying that it's hard to keep a good man down. I tend to believe that it's, you can't keep a godly man down. There was a, 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 a word in my studies that in Dubli let me pronounce this right, Holy Spirit. Let me pronounce this right. Let me see it first. And this is what type of man Paul was. Paul was indubitably, somebody help me pronounce this word. It's I-N-D-O-M-I-T-A-B-L-E, indubitably. In I N D O M I T A B L E. Indomitable. Indomitable. I looked that word up and it says, impossible to subdue, impossible to defeat. Paul in prison. It's impossible to, do, to subdue him. Even why in change, it was impossible to defeat him. This is the aspect or this is the, the, the purpose of why God put us here. When we embrace God and when we sell out to God, it's impossible to subdue us. It's impossible to defeat us. You're looking at me like, yeah, like Miss Hess, you don't understand what, what, what you're talking about. We say, these, we say these cliches in the Bible saying, well, guess what? God has no respect to a person. But we fall short. We fall short because of a trust issue. Because guess what? We don't see it like God sees it. Paul saw this as how God saw it. Many of the brothers in the Lord wax confident. You don't know who's watching you through the life of being a child of God. You don't know who's watching you. Waxing confidence in bonds, much more bold to speak the word without fear. Oh, Mr. Hills, I, I'm not a preacher. I'm not a preacher. I can't, I, can't, I, can't I can't witness to people. I just say, just check yourself to see if you're saved. <laughs> That's what I say. If you have been bought with a price, you're no more your own. You're somebody else's property. And if you're somebody else's property, you do what, other, you do what that person who owns you tells you to do. Well, we... We, we have a problem. We don't hear the Holy Spirit. See, Paul was governed by the Holy Spirit. See, I talked to my wife about this this morning, or was it this morning or last night, about Simon Says. We used to play a game called Simon Says. And everybody's familiar with that, right? You have about 15 people lined up here, right? And somebody's standing out in front. And guess what? Simon Says. Take one foot forward. And what do you do? You take one foot forward. Take another one. And that person's out, right? The point that I'm trying to make is this right here. We listen to the wrong person. We listen to what we want to hear instead of what God tells us what to do. Mm -hmm. So God told Paul, go to Jerusalem. Paul not knowing that, guess what, he was going to be arrested. Guess what? They imprisoned Paul. And guess what? After they imprisoned him, they shackled him to imperial guard inside the prison. Now check this out. Check this. I just want you to see it the way Paul saw it. We sometimes 
look at things in the church and we say, there's no way it can work. There's no way God can be working through that right there. God can be using you through that right there. But through Paul shackled to soldiers that came in day in and day out, Paul was able to witness to them and to win souls. What situation has God put you in that you could witness to someone? What situation? You on your job. You quiet as a house mouse. If they had to uh, identify you as, uh, as a child of God, they look over you. Because you never talk about the gospel. The gospel is the good news. It's the good news. But Paul, but, but Paul kept, kept on, kept on. Paul said, I wondered in that passage where it says, palaces and other places. Because guess what? What Paul was doing was so effective in prison. In prison. We have all rights. Paul had all rights to say, this Jesus stuff, I'm through it. I'm serving him. And he got me in prison. Yeah, I'm just through with it. I'm just through with it, brother. Brian. I'm through with it. Why would I need to be in prison? Because guess what? God, with His infinite wisdom, knew that. Guess what? And just like today, God is still infinite Amen. and has all wisdom. God knows that certain people in church won't go to certain places, so that He has to allow certain things to happen. Because guess what? You ain't the only one that God wanted to save. Amen. And for the reason why you being saved is to save other folks. Amen. No, I got mine. I got Jesus. You get yours. That's how, that's how Christians live. I, I keep telling you, they flaking. <laughs> they are flaking. I can't do that. I can't do that. I can't do it. But I'm more than a couple. You quote everything. Sit down. Just sit down. I'm, I'm saying, I'm, I'm to the, uh, I, I, I say this with the boldness of Christ. I'm not mad at you who act like that. Guess, because guess what? I know my father. I know that he's still in control. But I say it to prompt people to stop that foolishness. I know a lot of times when I say things, people may take it that, guess what, it's personal. Or that, guess what, I'm trying to attack him or anything. It's not. It's just that the Holy Spirit has prompted me to tell you that, guess what, God doesn't like it. And through his grace, he's trying to warn you. Verse 16, one preached Christ of contentions and not sincerity, supposing to add to my affliction. Paul had some gangsters, or as we say today, Paul had some haters. Hmm? If you think that you sit in church or that I'm, 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 let, let's, let's forget about that word in church. If you think I want you to understand, you live in a fantasy world. Yes. Even while Paul was in chains, uh, uh, chains, 
whose I am. This is Paul's attitude, having a positive attitude towards anything that comes towards me. I love this right here. And I didn't know that this was going to show up. A little bully, we call it money. But my son is from South Africa. And I love his power in the name. His power in the name. Amen. We call it money, but he calls it monkey. <laughs> I say, what? I say, I like that. Multiple. And it's how he says it with that African descent. He said, multiple. And the dog understands that. <laughs> and he is. I said, boy, that's a smart dog. <laughs> but he calls him multiple. And that name means to unstoppable. All right. Unable to come on this. I said, oh my goodness. I said, can you just go over there right now? And it impressed me that guess what? When we are children of God, you know, you know who's backing you. You know who's backing you. No matter what circumstance, the doctor says you got cancer. So what? Paul even digs even into that. Paul said, you know something. I'm, I'm just trying to hang out with y'all. I'm trying to further this gospel. But you know something. I'm caught between two streets. To stay with y'all, to follow the gospel, right. or to be with, or, 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 or go, back home, go, back, go back home to God. Chill out right there. Stop fooling with y'all, uh, flaky Christian. <laughs> yeah. This is where Paul's at. This is where we should be at. And I just love, I, I, I just love my brother when he said, I'm not afraid to die. says that guess what? It's like being at a campsite, closing down a campsite, putting the fire out, rolling up the tent, uh, uh, put packing everything back into the car, and headed home. You're headed home. You're not headed to a temporary staging area. This is only temporary. Amen. We head home. I say home. But most people don't see it that way. Mm -mm, mm -mm. church every time that you show up somewhere. Amen. You can tell God. You, you can tell about the good news. You can share the good news. Amen. But Paul said, for I know that this too shall turn to my salvation through your prayers and the supply of the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ. According to my honest expectation and my hope that there is that, that there is nothing that I can do. When you know who helps you to stand. You're not ashamed of it. Yes, you can get up on, on the rooftops and, and cry out. Even if you're in bondage between guards, you can see God still open up an opportunity to witness to people who, guess what, wouldn't normally have been witnessed to. Right. Your Lord, man, come down to your house and cut you 
like y'all. Y'all ain't even got a relationship other than, guess what? Mr. Fred, it's time for payment. But you have an, you have an opportunity right now to witness to a man. And guess what? Don't go to church. Get out of the back and out your car. And guess what? So the man comes up and asks you, hey, how's your day going? And God, you open up an opportunity right there. So many opportunities for us to witness about him. Because guess what? It's all about magnifying him. Amen. And Paul understood that. No matter what your circumstance is. And guess what? Me and my wife talk about this too. We talk about you can have a situation that it would be you can have a legitimate excuse. You can have a legit excuse to quit. In your eyesight. Yeah. You see, you know, the Bible says that Jesus was tempted 40 years and 40 years. The tempter came and tempted. He said, if you, if, if you be the son of God, turn me so. After 40 days and 40 nights, guess what? That every man would have been hungry, right? It's a legit question to ask him. It's a legit. He was in he was in body, right? He was in human form, right? Some people look at it and say, well, guess what? He's not wrong with it. Don't get it. Don't don't sit around. Right? It was legit. But no. You don't have to read the word. You said it through God's perspective. share the good news with their, with their children. I'll be willing. I'll be willing to say, uh, to say that. But Paul said, until the glass that we see through, there's a passage in the Bible that says that. Now, flaky Christian is that they don't hear God and they don't see God. Paul saw him in every situation that came to him. Paul once was beaten. Him and him and him and, him and, him and uh, Timothy was beaten. Paul and Silas was beaten. Thrown into jail and guess what? Was accused of causing a riot. But Paul seeing it the way God saw it. The Bible says, at midnight, they sang and the jail rock. And the prison door fell over. And guess what? God used an opportunity right there. The man who was guarding pulled his own sword out and was ready to kill himself. But Paul said, hold on, hold on, just a second, hold on. Martin Luther ain't coming tonight. Hold on. Guess what? The thing that I love about in closing with this right here is that Paul said, love this right here. Having this comfort, 
Paul was fully persuaded. Having this confidence, I know that I shall abide in, uh, and continue with you. Paul said, you know what? I'm going to be honest with y'all. I'm going to abide with you. Paul said, I'm going to abide with you. He said, I know the confidence that gets worse. If I get up out of here, it gets worse. It's going to hurt y'all. But I just want you to know where I want to be. You see, most Christians don't ever think about that. They don't ever think about where they want to be. How often, I, I challenge you, how often do you think about heaven? How often do you think about being with God, in the presence of God? We say, ask from the body to be present with the Lord, but nobody wants to buy tickets to the bridge. Nobody wants to purchase that ticket. You'll purchase an airplane ticket, you'll purchase a gift of a sky mile ticket. But you don't want to go home with God. You don't even have the thought. Uh-uh. We don't even have the thought. Most people don't even have the thought of going home with Jesus. All right. Hmm? And why? People are not persuaded. When you have the living word in your heart, for God I live and for God I die. Paul made that proclamation. Paul made a proclamation. If I live, it's to help you. If I die, guess what? Me and Jesus are going to walk. My father and Joy said, I'm going to walk around here all day. That's a beautiful song. But I want you to understand, we need to be heaven-minded. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We, we need to be God-minded. And we, our minds need to be toward winning souls at all costs. And being out of this touchy-feely relationship. Paul did not have a touchy-feeling relationship. What I mean by that right there, oh, oh, just because I'm in prison, I can't do nothing. Just because I make this much of money, I can't do nothing. I can't pay That's a touchy-feeling relationship. And people are controlled by their, by their feelings. Mm -hmm. Me and my wife, my wife got up this morning. We didn't go to bed until about 2 o'clock. My wife's alarm clock, she beat her alarm clock up this morning. I don't mean beat the alarm clock, but she, she, she woke up before it alarmed you guys. And you know what she made up in her mind? She said, oh, I'm up now. I might as well get on up. I might as well get on up. She went on in the bathroom, brush her teeth and everything. I'm still up. <laughs> My alarm clock went off. I hit it. I went on back. She finished brushing her teeth. Hey, 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 you gonna get up? You gonna get up? But thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I woke up crazy, y'all. She had a made-up mind to guess what? I'm going home. Amen. Amen. She wasn't controlled by not getting enough sleep. Well, most Christians, they are controlled by their feelings. Pastor understands, Sister Reed understands that I'm not going to be here today. I tell her I'm online. <laughs> I tell her I'm online. I even call her sometime during the week and tell her I enjoy the mess. And guess what? She ain't even put the mess down. <laughs> <laughs> guess what I can't understand? <laughs> what am I on? I wonder how many people going to be in line, or, 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 or in line at judgment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Give God an excuse then. Give God an excuse. God, you know, on the, on the first Sunday, you know, they COVID and, you know, uh, uh, passing them, uh, they, 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 they halfway ran them, they, they, them little filtration systems and everything, and I couldn't show up. But he's God. You forget. People forget. He's God. Amen. Do we understand what that means? He is God. Brother Marty, when you, when you was afflicted, 
He was God. Yeah. Look at what's going on. He was God. He knew when it was going to happen. He knew that he was going to sit here this morning. Because he is God. Yeah. Once we accept the fact that he is God, yeah. and nothing can, nothing can speak up on it. He's God. Once we get that mindset that he is God, he's in control. Then you will see the manifestation of God Thank you, Lord. working your life. Thank you, Lord. you can speak those things which are not though they are. Because he is God. And Paul knew that. Paul knew that. Guess what? No matter what happened to him, guess what? God was going to open up an opportunity. How many times do God open up opportunities in our lives? To share the good news. We're so passive, though. We're so passive. Oh, not now. It, it's not. It's the wrong time. Wrong time. Who controls time? <laughs> we ought to get to a point where, guess what? We make a proclamation. For God I live, and for God I die. And people ought to know you by that. I'm going to close my book. <laughs> Buddy of mine that I, I like, but I don't like his theology. He came out of the house and he told me, he said, Fred, he said, man, keep doing what you're doing. I'm looking at him. What are you talking about? I call him Will Holt. Ricky knows who I'm talking about. He came out of the house and he said, Fred, keep doing what you're doing. He said, you got a lot of people looking at you. Man, you're doing a great thing. I said, what? As soon as he said, talk to anybody. You got to do it. How you doing? You got to do it. You're good. You're good. I want you to understand my point here, brother. There are people looking at you that you are affecting. You ought to have an effect on people. If you understand that you have that type of effect on a person, you ought to realize that you ought to use it for God's glory. You ought to use it for God's glory. You ought to seek the opportunity. That's what I'm telling you this morning. Whether you be a king, or whether you be in Louis Vuitton, or whether you be in, in, in Julian Bird. Oh, I don't know if it's duty and birth. My wife, she, she like, yeah, she like doing it. She's doing it more. Probably got about 35 bags. I seen her cleaning some yesterday. But you want to know something? She ain't going to need no bag in heaven. She ain't going to need no bag in heaven. You see them, them, them heels she got on? She ain't going to need no heels in heaven. You see that, you see that little black and white outfit that she had laid out this morning, or last night hanging up. She ain't gonna need an outfit like that right there. Because guess what? The Bible says we're gonna be in the long white robes. I, I, I'm just, you know, when I get to heaven, God just let me just, I wanna be able to blow like, what's the, what's the little fella? Y'all know what song. Lee Williams. I think God, just let me blow a little bit like Lee Williams. A little bit of cooling water. I'm a, oh, guess what? Who is he? He's God, right? I just want to just share that with y'all because God placed that on my heart that guess what? We have to have a godly perspective.